Uh, up next, uh, we have a session, which is one of my favorite session titles, uh, No More BS, uh, Demystifying Game Hosting Beyond Marketing Speak. So please welcome to the stage, Lucas Tack from i3D. Please give a round of applause. Hello, everybody. <laughs> well, it's uh, truly an honor to be here. Um, you guys thinking, why does he have a ball? Believe me, it will come in handy later. Um, reason why I'm here. I am a firm believer in using the right people for the right job. And working now in the games industry, oh, wait a second, do I have a, like a, like a thing? Like a... Oh, this is it. Okay, thank you. Got it. So I'm a firm believer in using the right persons for the right job. And to be honest, as a biz dev um, and working with a marketing department, you get taught, you know, you know, put your company in the best daylight, I would say. But there is a but. So um, I'm going to take you through what I think you should be aware of in terms of making sure you have a success story for your multiplayer game. And of course, there is a lot of things I won't cover, but there are some things I can cover. Um, I'm going to take you through it. Let's take a look. So who am I? Lucas Tuck, Business Development Manager now at i3d.net. Uh, we specialize for more than 23 years already in game hosting of multiplayer games and low latency sensitive applications. Um, Discord, for example, is a very big customer of us. Everybody has heard of Discord. Nobody's heard of i3d.net. Weird story right there. Doesn't matter. Um, but more importantly, who in the audience is currently working on multiplayer games. Raise your hands. Sorry, the, the, the lights are very bright. Okay, okay see you. one hand, one hand, one hand. Okay, great. Um, would, you, would you incline? What, what kind of project are you currently working on? Yes, yes. Excuse me? Cool. But, but it's a multiplayer game, right? You have one host. Right. Any challenges currently in the project? But you're working with the multiplayer game. Um, well, I'm, go I'm gonna um, ask the audience then. Are, are there currently any challenges you are running into when it comes to hosting and, 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 and launching the multiplayer games? No? Well, <laughs> after, after working all these years with, um, with game studios, uh, there is one guy, actually, and, 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 and there was, I think, two weeks ago, uh, we, we were having this call uh, because, long story short, he is building this multiplayer game, and he summarized the, the, the essence of my talk and, and, and the, the, the lesson I want to teach you right here. Um, it's Slotty, as I can call him. He is the guy behind Call of Duty 2, Call of Duty 4, Modern Warfare, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, of course, Apex, and Titanfall 1 and 2. He shipped these games single-handedly. Sometimes he, he mentioned, like, every time I touch a multiplayer game, it turns into gold. And I cannot blame him, because he actually moved mountains. And I'm talking about tens of millions of concurrent users per game, and I can count seven already. And he said to me, Game quality is my number one priority. After that, it's costs, right? I think this should be always your number one priority. And game quality assurance, um, from a hosting, hosting perspective, of course, um, it's easily, easily said, you know, you, you, you can pay everybody in order to get a good game, but you also want to control your cost in order to be successful as well. So let's break it down then. From a game hosting perspective, I think there are three major points you should take into account when it comes to hosting your games. First and foremost, global presence. Data traffic lag, as Robert already said, um, we, 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 we are bound to physics, right? We, we can only travel with the speed of light. And th this is why we can have video chats across the Atlantic. This is why we still 
can, can, can talk because the speed of light is quite fast. But game-wise, we are still bound to like a th uh, two-thirds of the speed of light. Meaning that if you host a game in the US and you want to um, also cater to the players in Europe or in Asia, you're going to have a bad time. Because you need to be where your players are. You need to host locally close to your player base. Um, having enough servers is a secondary. So, 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 so being everywhere is great, but now, okay, wh what's the skill then? And thirdly, having servers in a data center is nothing more than chunks of metal in the fridge, right? If you don't connect the server, it doesn't do anything. So low latency networking, making sure you have the shortest routes, um, is key to your success as well. Uh, example, global presence. This is uh, a company. I, just kidding. No, this is i3d.net's backbone. Um, we have been building this low latency network over, like I said, uh, 23 years now. Um, it takes time. It takes a long time to establish this kind of connectivity all across the world and foremost, connect with the local ISPs, the eyeball networks, where your audience, the gamers, buy their internet from. Make sure they're connected. Uh, server capacity. So having a lot of locations is great, but you need to be able to scale. Thank you, Amazon. Thank you, Google. Uh, and here it is, low latency networking. Um, here we go. So this is super boring, and I thought of a game in order to make it come alive, right? Just bought this ball. Um, we're going to do a little game. So. The, the, the middle is, is, is the most crowded at the moment. Uh, all the way in the back, are you able to throw a ball really hard back? I'm talking to you, Mr. Greatbeard. Or, yes? Yes? Okay, so we have a volunteer. Um, I'm gonna give you the ball and pass it along. It can only travel one hop, meaning one row of people at a time. Please pass it along. You gotta throw it all the way. It needs to be one person, pop, pop, pop. Yeah, pass it along, all the way it, it reaches, yeah, exactly, now we're talking, good. Trust me, yes, exactly, one, one, that's it, that's it. Okay, come on, throw it. Oh, that's a good throw, but you proved my point, great sir. So what was more fast, giving it along or throwing it right back? And this is how internet works. The internet is the network of networks. They don't talk to each other unless we tell them to, unless we pay them to. So having a direct connection, having a direct line, for example, from Johannesburg back to France, it is backbone connectivity. It's router to router. It doesn't have to go through Nigeria to Dubai to, to I don't know, Milan. If you tell them, send it over, write me, it's more fast. So, that's not a given. Low latency comes from passing it along. Okay, uh, energized, thank you. Thank you, audience, appreciate it. Uh, fields of gold, also very important. How to control your costs, because having great things, like everything I, I, I said, it's great, a lot of servers everywhere, it's gonna drain your business. So. We have two different types of compute, because this is one of your main costs. You can go into the clouds, or you can go with the bare metal providers like Hetzner, service.com, um, you name it, right? So compute is one of your costs. Clouds is very flexible, but keep in mind, why is it more expensive to be flexible? You are also paying for the moments they are off. That's why your hourly rate is high, because the rest of the day, you, those servers are still there, right? So where, when, you, when you use them, for example, eight hours, you pay maybe exactly the same for a month, right? But you pay for when it's on. So flexible, highly cost, more robust, lower cost, cost effective. Everybody knows Hetzner, I think. Um, moving forward, bandwidth, connectivity, like I said, hopping, hopping, hopping. Imagine adding a dollar to every row right here. Adding a dollar. You know why? You want to make a buck. You want to make a buck. You want to make a buck. The, the, the action of passing your, your data traffic along, it takes 
it takes energy, right? It, 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 somebody built that network, why shouldn't they get paid? So having that direct connectivity, other knows, uh, known as peering agreements, um, peering agreements is like, um, you go over my routes, I can go over your routes, you know, well, let's call it even. So you, you call out the middleman, you do directly business with the ISPs, so it reduces cost. Um, like I said, it's a network of networks, and everybody wants to, you know, earn its keep. So bandwidth is a very important thing. Um, moving forward, live services, thank you. Thank you, Robert. Right? Um, greatly as um, multiplayer games are, you want to keep them alive, you want to scale them. And when you have a successful multiplayer game, things like a great engine are the start. Thank you, Photon. Um, things of an orchestrator, how can we scale, like a Thora, is very important. But then you have your community, you want to have an anti-toxicity, so modulate is very important. Uh, also, skill your backend. Um, <laughs> actually, I've added the green logo right here, Meta, MetaPlay. Um, great guys, if, if you run into Mika, say hi for me. Um, they make a technology that scales your backend, because putting servers is one thing, but if you don't scale the brain, so you, you can have 1,000 arms, but if you cannot move them, what's the point of 1,000 arms, right? You want to have also a brain that can, can, um, can process 1,000 arms. I think, I think that's a good analogy. I just made it up sometimes. Uh, okay, so um, back to the equation. If you want good game quality and you can control your costs, you have a win. And the balance is key. And the balance, in my opinion, is a hybrid hosting strategy. And this is the good thing. It used to be a world where we um, only can choose one or the other. No more. That's why I'm here. No more. There are now integrations. Companies are, st are working more and more together. And it happens now that we have, uh, you can benefit from both worlds. A uh, great example is the AWS Game Lift integration with i3D.net. Um, technical, boring stuff, not, not, go, not going over it, but it's a great example. Um, this is my own model, so, it's, it's, yeah, <laughs> don't, 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 um, don't pay me on it, but I, I think it's quite, I think it's quite, um, quite accurate. Point being, this. This is the best option, hybrid hosting, best of both worlds. Everywhere you are putting not all of your uh, eggs in one basket. And what's, what's better than having a great, great quality game while also keeping the money that you rightfully earned, right? Uh, my advice, make game quality your priority one. Also, keep control of your costs and put the right people in the right job. Uh, nowadays, we have a lot of companies that are very good at what they do. If you're going to ask me, um, I want a thousand servers tomorrow, I cannot help you. But if you want to have a good connection to some servers tomorrow, I can help you. If you want to have a thousand servers, great. Then we have Google and AWS and Azure that can help one bring one big uh, piece to the pile. So. Host your game in a hybrid strategy. Thank you. That's, that's the end of my TED Talk. Appreciate it. Are there any questions? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I think, I think we don't have time for... Or do we have time for a question? We have time for one question. One question, then. If anyone would like to... Uh, any burning questions? This Otherwise, we can, we, we, can, we, we can just cut it out, and then <laughs> after the show, it's also fine. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like I say, I'm sure you're very happy to speak just after the talk. If anyone wants to uh, to grab Lucas uh, outside, then then please do. But uh, thank you so much for your talk. Yeah. Uh, thank you for having me. Again, please. Appreciate thank you so it. Much.